What's going on, my warriors? How y'all doing? So listen up. I got some juicy, juicy to tell y'all. Baby, when I tell you I'm going through it over here, the temptation ain't no joke. You see, it's windy out here. It feels really good. But anyway, listen, I gotta get I gotta get this out before. I gotta get this off of my chest. You feel me? Like it's like I'm talking to my sister right now, like my sister Nettie. You know what I'm saying? Like Nettie, I miss you. But anyway, it's like I'm talking to my sister. Don't mind that the man in the back. You pay attention to me, okay? Pay attention to me. Listen to this. Lord Jesus. Now, I'm telling this story. Let me just go ahead and give this disclaimer. All right. If you like this content, please like it, share it, um, laugh at it, dislike it. I mean, you know, it doesn't matter. I'm just sharing this experience because I know for a fact that God is who he say he is. And he will do what he said he will do. You understand me? So let me tell you this story. All right. I bought my house. After I bought the house... There was a person that drove up. Me and my son were standing outside in the front. And there was a car that drove up and they took a rock, a big old decorative rock from out of the yard. And my son overheard them saying they ain't gonna need it anyway. So that's what he he's like, you, you see that? I was like, what? He's like, they just sold the people rocks. I was like, oh wow. So maybe about a week later, I saw a guy um, who had been coming in and out doing work. So I thought it was his house. Well, I walked up to the guy. I said, you know, hey, somebody sold your rocks out your yard. Needless to say, he was a, a contractor working on some, some stuff in that house. So he told me he was an electrician. Well, when he told me that, I was like, oh, you know what? I need you. So do you think you could give me an estimate on how much you would charge me to put in two lanterns that I had purchased from Habitat? So... He came over, he gave me the estimate. Um, we made appointment to get, you know, we made an appointment to, to start the work. And he started the work, right? He putting up these lanterns. Y'all, let me tell you something. I'm a single woman. It's been two years, you feel me? Two, over two years now. You, you understand what I'm saying? I know you can feel me on this. This man is tall. He's nice looking. You know what I'm saying? He's Mexican, but it, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's not, that's not me. I don't, I don't do all that. So anyway, I asked the man if he was single. He told me yes. I was like, okay. So that night, I prayed to God. I said, Lord, you know, if this is somebody that you think that I might be able to kind of like date or whatever, let me know. And he was like, well, you know, I, I prayed that prayer. And then the next day he came and said, I have to be honest, I'm married. I was like, oh. I said, well, that, my friend, changes everything. Thank you for letting me know that. And you can just continue to do your work. And I'm not going to, you know, pursue you like that. So he managed, he finished the work. The job is beautiful. Everything is up. The lanterns are up. I mean, like he did an amazing job and it was well worth what he charged me. It was worth it. But like, you know, I could kind of tell, scratch my back, that there was a bit of a attraction, you know, because he was asking me questions like, what do you think your family would say if uh, they knew you had a Mexican boyfriend? And I'm thinking like, um, I don't have a Mexican boyfriend. And uh, my family wouldn't have anything to say because they're not in my business. So that was pretty much, you know, whatever. All right, y'all. Now here we go. The turn of events is as follows. You better keep up. My sister came from Florida to visit while he was was he still doing work? But right at the end of the work, right after he finished the work, like literally she came like three days after he finished. So she didn't see um, the mess that was in the house. 
I had a dream. She came. I had a dream. I had a dream that there was a lump right here, a fluidy lump, fleshy lump. And I looked down at it and it was full of water. And I was like, what is this? You know, in my dream, that's what I'm saying, in my dream. And I'm like, what is this? I ain't paying attention to that. I mean, I did. I prayed it. I prayed about it. And I, you know, I came up against it. All right. So here we go. A couple of days later, right? My sister's here. She came on a Friday. She stayed Saturday, Sunday. All right. So Sunday night, we were coming into the house and she got spooked. And I closed the garage and she started praying. And she spoke in tongues. And um, I just stood there, you know, with respect. I didn't feel no type of way about it. I just let her have her moment. And so she told me that I needed to open my mouth. And I appreciated that. So once that was over, we came into the house. I went and got the dog and I let him outside. Even though it was dark, I let him out. So I'm trying to get the dog. My sister goes into the bed, the guest bedroom. I'm trying to get the dog to come in the house now because I'm ready for him to come in the house. Why my dog would not come into the house? The thing is, is the dog does not like to be away from me. He doesn't like to be outside in the dark. But this particular night, he stood right at the door, right a little bit outside of arm's reach. And he stood there looking at me. And he was not coming in the house. And I kept closing the door and opening the door. I'm like, come on to... And as I'm standing there, y'all, I felt something. I felt a spirit go through me and enter my house. Y'all, it sent goosebumps all over my body. I, when I tell y'all it hit me hard, it hit me so hard that the next day, oh, mind you, let me, let me tell you about two real quick. So after, after that happened, I was like, oh, I'm getting chills right now just talking about it. Like I'm getting goosebumps because like, that was a clear, clear spirit coming into my, I felt it come right through my chest. So I came out and I grabbed the dog. I got him. Finally, I got him in the house. And I was like, oh my God. So immediately I'm like, go get in the shower. Because that's my thing. I have to be in, I like to be in the water. If I'm gonna pray, I feel like my prayers are more effective inside of water. You feel me? And anybody that's a musician, anybody that knows about music and sound can understand, you know, how far uh, a sound can travel inside of water. So, and it's also in the Bible, even when they pierced Jesus, they, they that water and blood came from his side. Not just water, not just blood, but water and blood. So we got it. But anyway, I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> but anyway, so I went into the room and I told my sister what happened. And she just was like, you need to, you might need to pray about that one. I was like, yeah, I am. So I said, I'm going to get in the shower. I got in the shower. I prayed against whatever that was. I didn't know what it was, y'all. I'm not going to lie. But I prayed and I know my prayers are effective, but I also know that if you don't know what you're praying for, then that that very thing will continue to manifest itself. And you literally, hopefully, you know, God willing, you get a dream or you'll figure it out. Like the Holy Spirit will give you um, wisdom and understanding and discernment so you can figure it out. But if you can't, if you don't have those things already inside of you, it's going to be real hard for you to figure it out. So anyway, the next day, um, I woke up and I had not one, not two, but three cold sores on the left side of my lip. One, two, three. For real, for real. One was, this was the biggest, medium and small on my lip. I never had that happen to me ever in my life, ever. I'm, I'm never. So anyway. I, you know, spend the rest of my morning with my sister and um, I take her to the airport and she leaves and it's just crazy. She leaves. All right. After my sister leaves, I still got these cold sores on my lip. 
my electrician is now coming around just to, you know, saying just to have coffee and chill, which he should not have been because he's married. But somehow in my in my my mind, in my great brilliant mind, I thought it would be it would be I, you know. Well, guess what happened? After when well, my co-star went away, um, in between that time, you know, like it, it, whatever. Anyway, let me stick to the story. So the co-star, it went, it was going away, it went away. I ended up helping the, the electrician, who is a painter as well. I ended up helping him with a property right down the street from my house. I literally walked over to the property to help him paint. Now, I would love to paint my house. So I figured I can get some experience, you know what I'm saying? And then just come and do my own stuff because I'm cheap like that, you know? Well, it's not that I'm cheap. It's just that I can do anything I want, right? So anyway, I helped him with the job. Y'all tell me why the spirit of lust came upon me and him. And I, Lord Jesus, y'all. I literally almost did something with that man inside of that place. I ran out of there, y'all. I ran. I ain't lying. I ran. I got in my <laughs> Oh, I had my car that day. I got in my car and I took off and went home. I was like, oh my God. So he apologized and I explained to him like, you don't really understand the ramifications behind these actions. I said, do you understand that you would cause curses to come upon your family? your kids. I was like, no. Uh, I repented. I repented. I asked for forgiveness. You know what I'm saying? Even though I didn't do anything, I just, you should not be lusting after nobody's husband. And you know, I had been guilty of that in the past. So I felt like it was my, it was Satan trying to test me to see if I would do it again. And I refused. I was like, no, I'm not doing that again. <laughs> Because I almost died the last time I did that. So, no, we're not going to go there. And so I ended up um, having a dream about silver. And the dream was that sil Now, my sister has gone back to Florida. I'm trying to help y'all keep up with the story. I am now done with all the work in the house. And now I'm kind of helping the electrician do some painting. Okay. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> I know. Listen, I know. I know. Just walk right into it. I know. So, yeah, that's what I did. But, baby, when I tell you, I had a dream right before my sister came. I had a dream that I had a lump on my chest. And that lump manifested itself into a vaginal irritation. Now, mind you, I'm not having sex. So there's no reason why I should have anything going on down there, right? So I'm like, maybe it's a yeast infection. Okay, let me get some cream, figure it out. It's not. Now, mind you, I haven't put two and two together about the dream yet. But I kept thinking, like, is the dream related to that? Because the dream was on my sh shoulder. It was right here on my shoulder, right here. Baby, when I tell you, it came to me a couple of nights ago. Now, I had what I had to do, it is since gone. It's gone, okay? But let me tell you what the trick of the devil was. This is the trick of the devil. Now, I already have issues with my arms and my hands from the military, right? What he did is he sent a spirit of infirmity to torment me and make me scratch. And when I scratch, it caused the muscles in my arms to get weaker and weaker. You feel me? And that is the trick of the devil is to disarm. I don't like bugs. It's to disarm you. It's to use your illnesses and, and against you to exacerbate them. So that you're not able to do the work, you know, the, the work of God. You're not able to do the work for the kingdom. 
that's the that is one of the goals of the devil. And so I, it took for me to watch a couple of videos to understand what was happening, to understand, which I already kind of knew it was the spirit of infirmity. I'm not going to lie. I think I, I knew it was the spirit of infirmity. I did. But I, I just was like, you know what? I'm just going to try to find a video that will help me pray for me. Because, you know, the Bible says, with two or more gathered in my name, I am there. And so I found a uh, video of a uh, pastor doing deliverance. He was doing a deliverance prayer. And I got in the shower and I prayed with him. You feel me? I prayed with him. And so I felt better like I did I felt better I understood through watching um, some of Kevin L.A. Ewing videos I understood what was happening with the itching and I also was able to understand why the thing was on my chest because my whole arm was going numb from here right where that thing was at right here all the way to the tips of my fingers y'all that's why the lump was there the infirmity was on my arm it caused a rash so that I was scratched. And I am left-handed. Hmm. See? I'm left-handed. I'm not right-handed. I'm left-handed. So, yeah. So, here I am. I have since dismissed the electrician. He tried to reel me in for a couple of jobs that I did help him with. But um, this infirmity was so bad. I said, he kept telling me, he said, I'm not going to stop this until you leave that man alone. And so what he did is he took me right into the Bible and he told me the same way that he told me about another female. Like I'm asking the question in my mind and he's answering it in the Bible. And I know that the message is for me. You know, trust me, you know when the message is for you. You know that. You will know that. So I didn't question it. I was like, okay, I know what I got to do. In the Bible, it mentions silver. I dreamed about silver. That's another thing I did. I had a dream about like silverware, but the silverware was growing and multiplying so much so that it, it turned into like a big old giant silver nugget. It was weird. So the next day, the electrician comes in for coffee. We're going to go finish up this job up the street. The man starts talking to me about silver. Come on now. I knew. I was like, oh, okay. And so then God took me into the Bible and he showed me where this man would, would build houses, but he would never own them. He would plant vineyards, but he would never drink the wine. I was like, oh, he's a worker bee. So he was like you gotta he said leave that man alone and i was like i got it so i told him i said look here you can't even come around here no more don't come over here no more i don't want to talk to you like <laughs> like i'm done i'm i said listen you did the job i appreciate it but i'm done whether i'm gonna let him do any other work in my house or not i don't know but at the present moment i have told that man you can't even come over here no more because, see, I told him, I said, and you need to repent. I said, you need to ask for forgiveness. I said, you need to repent for what you did as well. I said, because you're not exempt from this. I said, now, I've done my part, and I can feel myself getting better. But I told him, I said, you need to repent. I said, unless you want curses to come on your children and you, and I said, you need to repent for this. Now, if you ain't happy, I'm going to tell people, if you're not happy, leave but the one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to cheat you do not want to cheat you don't what if that man had a told me when he told me he was single what if he had stuck with that story and i had ended up sleeping with him first of all i'm fornicating second of all i'm sleeping with a married man and i don't even know it what that, that doesn't exempt me from the curses do you know what god would have did to me i got a grandson getting ready to be born I ain't trying to, no, 
No, the, the Bible says that the curses will not come without a cause. So if you are, listen, the you better walk that narrow path, baby, because I'm telling you, you better not go to the left or the right. Because in an instant, God will inflict you with something. <sighs> or you will allow something into your life because of your actions. You see what I'm saying? You can also do that. Because of my actions, that spirit, it manifested itself. Now, had I not been engaging that man, maybe I would have been able to fight that thing. But because my heart was not, you feel me? It was over there. It got me. But I knew enough to say, no, I can't do this. Because it, I said, no, nah, you're not messing up my family. I got grandbaby coming. No. We're not doing this. And everybody's doing very well. So God forbid that I take off, go off the path and go to the side and do something I ain't supposed to do. Next thing you know, you know what I'm saying? Something happened to the babies. I can't. And that is exactly how these curses work. And not to mention the witchcraft that has been projected into my life. The covenants that my family, my ancestors have come into agreement with masonry all of that stuff those those spirits linger they watch they send watchers all the time i have watchers this dog might be a watcher i'm watching him while he watching me you feel me because i don't play you got to go birds all up in my yard raising their heads up in the air yeah this ain't no game so here we are a couple of weeks later we have a hailstorm I got orbs floating in my yard. Orbs. I mean, like, balls. Round orbs with, like, some kind of a a glow of, a glow around them. And it was a lot of them in my yard. I had a halo, a glow, like a, a rainbow at night over my house. So I know that I'm protected. Y'all, I live on the corner. I live on the corner. What does the Bible talk about? The cornerstone. That they that the builders rejected. They rejected me. But look at where I'm at. I'm standing. I'm on the cornerstone, baby. Baby, on the solid rock, I stand. Mm, mm, mm. So listen, I ain't got all that John and Luke and Mark and Matthew. I don't have all that for you. I got scripture for you and I got truth. And the truth that I'm telling you is my truth. I can't speak nobody else's truth but mine, okay? So listen, I want to tell you to stay vigilant. Do not give up the fight. Do not think that because you got rid of one demon, another one not coming right back. It's a constant attack, y'all. We are constantly being attacked. You have to put on the whole armor of God every day, every night. I promise you, you got spirits and i really believe it's the spirit of lila or or because it was shown to me in the bible she messing with sleep mess with your dreams i don't know you feel me but i do know that there is a spirit that will block your dreams now what the name of that spirit is i don't know but i tell you what those things we have to come up against so that we can get them dreams through like you remember who was that Daniel that was praying and the angel had been fighting and fighting to get down to him. Like for real, this is why we have to stay in prayer. It's hard. I ain't gonna lie. It's hard y'all not having nobody around because nobody is on your level. Hey, it's all good. But at the same, at the end of the day, you know, nobody can get you into heaven or hell. Only you. And your decisions are what you make. So, y'all be blessed. I love y'all. It's getting hot. That's why my face bottled up. I'm like, oh my God, it's getting hot out here. But I like being in the sun, so it doesn't matter to me. So, y'all be blessed. Mwah. I love y'all. All right. Stay prayed up.